Hey, thanks for watching CNN 10. Our daily 10 minute shows are on pause for the summer, but we will be posting clips like this Monday through Friday until our regular programming resumes in August. So please enjoy, and to get notified of our content, please like and subscribe to this channel and keep up with us at CNN10.com. Despite all the free sleep advice out there, getting a good night's rest is still a struggle for many of us. The CDC estimates that about 70 million Americans still suffer from chronic sleep problems. So we asked Dr. Naomi Shaw, a sleep expert at Mount Sinai Hospital, to help us understand what we're still getting wrong about sleep. I can tell you as a sleep researcher, I have never looked at my sleep patterns on a wearable device because I can judge the quality of my sleep based on how I feel. The data on wearables is quite controversial. There is definitely some evidence that maybe tracking it for people who are not predisposed to having insomnia can be a good thing. But if you are already someone who's worried about your sleep, tracking it and quantifying it and following it on a daily basis is probably actually going to create more problems for you than help. It's this tendency to stay up late till 11 and then wake up at 5 a.m. to work out. So you're sleeping six hours and you're obviously cutting back on the required amount of sleep and you're actually exercising when you're biologically asleep, right? So your brain and your circadian rhythm is asleep and now you're making your body do the most extreme, which is work out. There's evidence that suggests that you actually are more prone to injury, muscle injury, and also you just don't get the benefit of exercise that you would if you actually slept, you know, seven to eight hours. 40% of Americans actually sleep less than seven hours. It's really a big problem. So when you don't get enough sleep, your body, your brain doesn't get a chance to do the things that it typically does during sleep. Your brain is actually turning into a housekeeping role and is actually clearing toxins that you've accumulated throughout the day, which you wouldn't be able to do if you don't get enough sleep. And then of course, memory consolidation occurs in sleep and a bulk of your testosterone for men is released during sleep. So cutting back on sleep, probably not a good thing. So you can make up acute sleep loss within the next day. So if you stayed up for an exam, you can make up the next day. It's sort of the chronic sleep loss and chronic sleep deprivation. I don't think you can really pay back all of that sleep debt. But more importantly, it takes years of this chronic sleep deprivation to take its toll. So if you're in your 20s and 30s and working out and cutting back on sleep, you know, you're probably not going to feel it. But what happens when you're 50 and your BMI is now elevated and you haven't changed anything else except that sleep, which is so vital for, you know, obvious metabolic uh, function, I think that's where you start to see it. It's better that you set an alarm and you wake up and not continue to hit the snooze because you're probably going to feel miserable, more tired than what you expected by getting that extra 10 to 15 minutes in. Because if you continue to go into these smaller sleep fragments, there's actually sleep inertia that can actually make you more sleepy when you try to wake up. I'm guilty of snoozing, so I'm just, I, I know what's right. Of course, we don't always do the right thing, but it's important that we keep that in mind. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter at CNN10.com and we'll see you in August for daily episodes of CNN 10. I'm Carl Azus.